Yet, yes, yes, I know. I, I know I've been putting it off. I know I've been delaying. I, I'm, I'm just about to shoot the review, okay? No, you can't stay on the phone until I do it. I don't care if you want to make sure I do it or not. I can't start the review until I hang up. No, 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 no. Literally, I can't start the review without hanging up. Look, look you're just going to... For, forget it, forget it. Common Rider Double Roleplay Review, Beetle fu <laughs> Go away! Sorry, Grandma. We start off in cell phone mode, and like most cell phones, it starts off closed up. But considering it's just a closed cell phone, there are a surprising number of details in this thing. For starters, look at this. Beautiful Bandai silver and gold here, and working in metallic blue as well. You can also see it a little bit here on the hinge, which is a very small, but mm, it's a nice detail to have. Also in this form you can see a lot of little molded details. All these little crude features that have been a staple of Kamen Rider Double's roleplay toys. Always gives you that feeling that this was made in a workshop and I love that. Now it clips open. Now you can hear that snap so it's surprising that it actually does that. And as the open cell phone, hmm, not bad. It's a little strange, however, in more than one way. Well, first off, it's a little odd feeling in the hand because of this little wing set in the back, but not too bad. The number pad's what really throws me. This thing would be a nightmare to text on. I mean, look at that. They're, they're all over the place. This is not the number system I'm, uh, that I'm used to. And up here, very reflective sticker to make up for the lack that they can't put glass in there. You could probably see my camera in that reflection in there. As you can see, it is always Sunday about 8 a.m. You've always got five bars, you've always got email, and you've always got a full battery. That's how Axel rolls. He never checks his email and he never has to buy a new battery. He's just that cool. Some extra painted detail up here. These little silver cylinders are a little nice touch. And this nice trim continuing the silver. It's really well done overall. I mean, there's no way this looks like any kind of real cell phone, but as a fantasy phone, hmm, not bad. Now briefly, we're going to look at the Gaia memory that's included with this toy, as they are included with every Kamen Rider roleplay toy. This is a little different, however. You can see it's not quite the same voice, is it? It's quite a different design as well. You've got a lot of mechanical details molded into it. it kind of fits that crude aesthetic that all the toys seem to have, which I actually really like. But at the same time, the sticker is shaped differently. You've got a different little logo on there. Overall, it's just a very different feel. I mean, compared to the very sleek and smooth Gaia memories that all the other toys seem to have, Anything that comes with a gadget is rather crude and artificial. You know, as if it's just a little replacement machine. I actually really dig that design. And even the different voice kind of grows on you. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the noises the memory makes because it's a little bit easier to access in this mode. Inserting it gets you one activation noise. The familiar Gaia memory insert noise, but you have to hit it again to activate live mode. You can get a lovely combination of odd sounds. Now I'll cycle through the remaining sounds here. It's pulled randomly off of the memory chip in the Gaia memory. So eh, you can never really be sure of what's going to come out of this thing when you, once you hit the button.
So a lot of weird mechanical beetle noises. I'm not sure a beetle makes all those noises, but mm, it doesn't sound too bad. To eject the memory, you hold down this extra button here with the gold arrow. That releases the catch, pull out, and that's a very familiar noise. Simple as that. Transformation into live mode, actually quite simple. You fold out the legs here from the number pad all the way around. You gotta make sure that's open. Now, split that part. The back goes up to form the horn. These fold down to form the legs. And then flip it over and you're basically done. You have the optional wings, but essentially, that's the beetle phone in live mode. Now in live mode, we definitely get the impression of a beetle, especially in the one detail I really like. Those hinges that were inexplicably painted in phone mode have now become the beetle's eyes. It's a sneaky little touch by Bandai and it's quite appreciated. I thought that was a pretty nice touch. You can also see why the pattern of the phone mode looks so strange. It was the beetle horn completely painted up. It does make a nice little form here. It definitely gives the impression of a beetle. And you actually get a little bit more playability than you do with the stag phone because this one does have the opening wings on the back. Now that hinders things a little bit, which you'll see in a minute, but overall it does give you a little bit more playability with this thing than you would most of these uh, roleplay toys. Uh, there are a few problems, unfortunately. As you can see, the back legs here, they don't quite line up. I mean, you can't put these down any anymore, so they're never going to sit on the floor. And the front legs tend to spring closed over the eyes. Uh, this will happen a lot if you try to put it down on a flat surface too fast. It'll kind of latch into that position, which is kind of unfortunate. So it, this thing is doomed to never be on all six legs. But the important part is it does give the very good impression of a beetle. It does come off very well. And, you know, it's a fair representation of the, of the actual device from the show. Honestly, where this toy shines best is in combination with the trigger magnum. Well, it makes a few interesting counterparts. Aside from being color coordinated, you can actually do a lot of little interesting things if you just use a little imagination. Lock it into place like so, clips in, and you've got to release it by holding onto the little triggers here. That means you're not going to make this thing fly off no matter what you do with it. But with all these little legs flipping around, you've got some interesting combinations. I mean, if you want a little, like, pretend that's a laser scope, you can do that. If you want a little bit of, uh, something a little bit more advanced, fold up the legs and now you've got some kind of scanning scope. Or, to go full out, up with these back legs, up with this, back here. Now I have a crossbow. Again, this is a role play toy, so whatever role you want it to make, that's what role it plays. It's all about imagination. Don't be afraid to experiment and just be goofy with this kind of thing. Hello! I told you not to call me while I'm killing! Yes, I will pick up milk on the way home. I I've got a dopant on the rampage. Call me later! Now, there's plenty of things you can do with this thing and the trigger magnum. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out as many uses with this thing. Uh, unfortunately, there's a few reasons why it doesn't work with the metal shaft as well. Number one being, you have to have the wings open in order to attach it. There's no other real way to do it. The other one is, you can't do it in beetle mode. Because the horn, if I'll, dis I'll demonstrate, bumps against your knuckles. So that kind of hinders things. But, you know, imagination is the key here. I mean, if you can figure out something, then, you know, congratulations. You've done better than I. The best I can figure out is either a handguard of some kind or some super telephone receiver. You know, just in case you wind up on Jupiter and really need to call in a pizza. That's the best I got. And of course, since this is a Gaia memory, 
it will work in the double driver. However, it will work a little bit differently. Remember how it has two activation sounds for live mode? Inserting it once will activate it instantly. So you kind of have to wait for it to boot up. Now once I open the driver, it'll play the second. Now, who should we pair it with? Hmm... I think this one's rather appropriate. How about you? It's just a candy toy version, so no lights. This one doesn't have any lights either, though, so hardly matters. Let's try this one out. Yeah. The gadget memories kind of do their own thing all at once, it, since it pretty much just plays the live noise. It doesn't work spectacularly well, but well enough you could actually get away with it. And just as this guy's memory works in the double driver, the opposite is true as well. These little uh, memory gadgets, uh, as soon as you put a memory inside them that is not theirs, it'll go straight into maximum drive mode. And most of them have a unique way of displaying that. We'll try out heat. We'll set this beetle on fire. Inserts the same way as its own memory. And you can see here the light coming from a small hole in the top. It actually creates a rather interesting little pattern here on the top. It actually looks like a power bar if you angle it just right. Hit the button and activates the final attack noise. So yeah, pretty standard maximum drive. To sum up, the Beetle Phone's actually quite an interesting toy. There's a lot of little things it can do, and what it does, it does fairly well. Now, the connectivity to the other toys, on the other hand, feels a little bit limited, unfortunately. Uh, now granted, it all depends on your imagination. If you saw what this thing can do and you have something in mind, then awesome. I mean, that's, in, that's probably one up to you and you've done better than I. But as for me, I find it just a little too limited and it's a mild to normal recommendation. Oh, unless you have one certain other toy for Common Rider Double, the Fies Memory because this just makes it awesome. Now how appropriate is that? This review brought to you by Hobby Link Japan, my favorite site for import toys. Yes, I'm sorry, Grandma, I honestly didn't know it was you. I, I am sorry. By the, by the way, uh, are you done with that camera you borrowed from me? I'm, I'm like a week away from a convention. I really need it back. What do you mean it flew off? The cameras don't fly off. I mean, if you lost it, that's okay. Just tell... No, look, look, no, look, if you lost it, just tell me. I really need that camera. I mean, the only other one I have is this blue one over here, and I really don't want to use it because it's kind of weird. Which camera did you take?